Good to see you, creator. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to control your media sources in OBS Studio. And for the first time, you will be able to pause your videos during a live stream. Let's get some. Gear Vlogs reached out to me on Twitter, a longtime friend of mine on YouTube, and he brought to my attention a plugin called Media Controls for OBS Studio. And after taking a little quick peek at it, I said to myself, ooh, this is a good one. I got to do a video about this. So thank you, Gear Vlogs, for letting me know about this plugin. What we're going to do is we're going to install this thing because all installs are different for OBS. I have good news as well. This will work for Mac users. So good news for that as well. I'm going to dig into the installation. I'm going to move right into showing you how this thing works. And then I'll be done and you can move on with your day. Okay, let's start by finding the download page. The best way to get there really is to just do a Google search. So if you type in OBS Media Controls or Control, doesn't really matter. I'll put an S after the L, Controls. Hit your Enter key and the first thing that should pop up is Media Controls OBS Forms. I'll put a link in the description for you so you can find this easily. But you can just simply search for it if you wish. Now here's the program. It looks pretty cool. This is what it got my attention when I actually saw this stuff. This is sort of the uh, place where the program lives here. The white button naturally is the download uh, files. I'm going to download that, that in a second. I do want to bring your attention again to the supported platforms, Windows and Mac and Linux, which is cool. And just shut off your OBS program. We'll do that now since I'm talking about it. Close the program. Good to go. That way, after you install this thing and you open up OBS, it'll it'll all be there. Otherwise, you'll be like, yo, man, I don't see it anywhere when I look at the program. Yeah, it's because the stupid program doesn't know that it's there. You have to restart it. Anyway, let's download this thing. White button, hit the download button. And it wants to ask you what, what file to download. In my case, it would be the Windows zip file or it comes with an installer. I highly recommend going with installers with OBS if it exists. So in this case, I'm going to install the installer, which will do all the installation for you. You don't have to copy any folders or anything. I'll hit that one and download it. Upon downloading it to my computer, I open up the zip file. And I'm going to double click the media controls installer and I get this prompt. Okay. Windows is, is sort of like, Hey, I don't like this program, man. It's, it's not recognized, blah, 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 blah. Hit more information and hit run anyway, okay? And then it's going to install this thing automatically in the right location because it's an installer and I don't have to worry about where it's my OBS program is installed. It found it for me automatically. I'm going to hit next. This screen shows up a lot and it can be kind of scary. Don't let it bother you. Just hit yes to this. Hit next. Install. Let it do its magic. Hit finish. Now, we're not finished. We have to do something else. Let's go back. Uh, I'll close this window, close this window too. scroll down and it says install the latest Visual C++ redistributable for Visual Studio 2019. Okay, so I guess it's using Visual++ to work. So I just downloaded the exe file. I'll save that to my downloads folder. Okay, it downloaded it. I'll double click the exe file. Click I agree, click install. There it goes. Okay, now it wants me to restart my computer. Okay, I know this is kind of scary. I'm, this is the first time I've ever done it, so cross your fingers. You're, I can't, oh my God, I'm recording. Okay, so I gotta stop my record, screen recording software here. Hit restart, and let's see how it worked out. Yee. Okay, thankfully my operating system is still functional after the Visual++ Plus Plus update. Thank you very much. Let's move on to opening up OBS Studio for the first time. Here we are. Uh, I think probably what we should do is just create a scene and add a source with a video in it just so that we can see if we can control it. I'll hit the plus sign for sources and select a media source. I'll call this Jennifer or Jen Marbles, I'll call it. Because I'm going to show a Jen Marbles video. And the reason why I'm showing it is because she has set it as commercial free. And it's kind of funny. I'll hit OK. And I'll click the browse button here. We'll get to the video. Downloads. There it is. Jen Marbles. Hit that. And we'll loop it. We'll hit OK. And there she is. OK. Let's go into View, Docs, and Media Controls. This is a brand new button here in the navigation. I'll hit it. There it is. If I hit the pause button. Yes. Awesome. awesome. It actually pauses the video. Can I go back? What happens if I take the 
slider here and hit play. Oh, look at that. It, it allows you to cue. Super cool. Now, how do I put this box amongst my other controls here? Can I put it in there? Oh, wow. It actually allows you to put it between things or inside of things. All right, let, if I put it between it, let's let it go. Oh, that's so very cool. Look at that. It actually puts it in between your other uh, components in the dock here. What if I hit the X, okay? And I hit View, Dock, Media Controls again. All right, it puts it back in there. That's interesting. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, okay, let's just try this. Oh, and it puts it in a tab. Check that out. That is slick right there. Amazing. So that's how you are able to put it into the interface so that it's dancing with the interface. You can just simply drag it out and drag it in between or make it part of another piece. Okay, let's go over these controls because they are a little bit funky and it's just, I wanna make sure you understand what's going on here because it could have an effect on how you do your comments on the video during your live stream. It's, this, is, this is kind of important. So, okay, if you hit the stop button, okay, it brings the cursor all the way to zero. And it's grayed out. You cannot drag it and cue the video. Keep that in mind. You, you cannot, cannot cue up, up the video after you hit the stop button. button. If you hit the play button, it plays. Is hungry. Okay. Oh, God. You can move the cursor while it's in play mode, but it's funky. So I don't recommend that you cue up while it's playing. What I recommend that you do is pause it, right? And now you can you can scroll it without any much of a problem. Now here's the thing, it doesn't give you like a YouTube thing where you can drag the cursor and see like a little summary square come up and show you what you're looking at without actually playing it. Don't have that with this one, but you do have a time code. So if you're planning on making comments on a video during a live stream, it would be really smart to write down the time code at specific points of interest when you're preparing your live stream, okay? So I, that's what I would recommend that you do. That way you can hit pause, scroll it to the place where you wanna be, and then hit play and you're good. That would the next thing that it has is this weird recycle button. Honestly, I don't know why they even have it. What it does is put the playhead back to zero and automatically play again. Mouth is... <laughs> And it's funky. It's funky because the caching is weird and sometimes it doesn't work right. So again, I don't know that I would even bother with that button. And then finally, they have these forward and back buttons and they don't do anything. Why? Yeah. Well, it's for the VLC source. The VLC, if you don't know, is a media player. It plays music and video. It's probably the best player that's available for any computer out there. It's got all the codecs. It plays everything. It is absolutely awesome. And it's so awesome that if you install the 64-bit version of this program onto your computer, OBS will automatically see it on your system and create a source selection. So like I said, I have the 64-bit installed. It has to be 64-bit. If I hit the plus sign, there it is. The VLC video source just shows up automatically. You don't have to install a plugin. It just puts it in there. So that's really cool. So I have a scene four here playing music right now when I hit the forward buttons it will automatically cue to the next piece of music now there is a bit of a lag almost like a two second lag before it actually moves to the next song so keep that in mind it will lag a little bit based on your processor and all that crazy stuff there is a little bit of a delay after you click the forward button. Okay, there are some more parameters. If you right click in the gray area, you, you can turn on show time in decibels. You can show time remaining, which will be on the right hand side. That's pretty cool, I guess. Another one is show all media sources. Now I highly recommend you, you do not d use this parameter because it will get so confusing for you to understand what you need to manipulate during your live stream. Trust me, it's like talking and juggling and eating your dinner at the same time when you're doing a live stream you want to make things as absolutely dead simple as possible and another thing is this so let's turn that off when you start your video that you're going to make comments on for the first time you don't want it to do this watch mouth is hungry mouth is hungry do you see how the media starts right when you click the scene that's a no-no because it's going to start going in right away playing the sound and you're you want to have some breathing room to sort of set up the video before 
actually playing it. So what I recommend you do is go into the source and make sure that in properties, you turn off restart playback when the source becomes active. That's really, really important. Another thing is tee up your scenes, okay, with the media control by hitting play first. Then you have a preview for that scene. You can take the playhead and move it all the way back to zero. Now you don't start the scene with a black screen. You have a nice preview. So that's kind of a little tip there for you. Now I'm going to post some links to some videos. One will take you to some outstanding tutorials about OBS that will rock your world. I will catch you on the flip side. Stay strong and keep fighting. Yeah!